Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calumso, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather around the table of the Word and the Eucharist to put today our confidence in God. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this encounter with our Lord, let us first acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you, rec you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory Amen. to God, God in the, the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they, to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till He have pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord, have pity on us, for we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are more than sated with the mockery of the arrogant, with the contempt of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, may not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly for my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ might dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them, he was amazed at their lack of faith. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Every Sunday, we come to church, we celebrate the Mass together as one family. And every Sunday, as we go to Mass, notice that we first listen to the Word of God. And this is to remind us, my dear brothers and sisters, that every Sunday, is not only a time for gathering, not only a time for worship, but it is a time also to learn about life. How are we going to live our lives according to the Word of God? Sana po mga kapatid, tuwing linggo na nagkakatipon po tayo, tayo ay nagsisimba, nagdiriwang ng misa, maalala po natin na hindi lamang po tayo nagsisimba o nagpupuri sa Diyos, hindi lamang po tayo nagkikita-kita bilang isang pamayanan, kundi sa pakikinig natin sa salita ng Diyos, ay tinuturuan tayo ng Diyos paano mamuhay, lalo na po sa ating panahon na pinagdaraanan. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, we will learn something about life from the life of the prophets. Matututo tayo tungkol sa buhay ng mga propeta na isinusugo ng Diyos, pinapadala ng Diyos. Ano nga ba ang matututunan natin sa buhay ng mga propeta? In our first reading today from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, we see that a prophet is sent by God to a people who are 
unbelieving. Isinusugo ng Diyos ang isang propeta sa mga tao na hindi naniniwala. Obstinate of heart, hard of face, according to the first reading, I am sending you to these people. And let us remember in our first reading, God is sending the prophet Ezekiel to these people so that he could bring the message of God to people who have already forgotten God, for people who have rebelled against God. And they shall know, God said, that a prophet has been among them. Ang isang propeta ay isinusugo ng Diyos nang sa gayon ay magbigay ng liwanag, magbigay ng salita ng Diyos sa mga tao, lalo na sa mga nakakalimot nito. But God has already warned the prophet Ezekiel, I am sending you to people who are hard of face and obstinate of heart. Parang sinasabi ng Panginoon kay Propeta Ezekiel, ihanda mo na ang sarili mo. Kasi ang mga taong pupuntahan mo ay mayroong hard of face. No, kanina ko pa iniisip, ano nga ba sa Tagalog ang hard of face? No, makapal ang muka. No, matigas na ang muka. Ibig sabihin, hindi na nakikinig. Obstinate of heart. Matigas na. Manhid na ang puso. God warned Ezekiel that He will be sending them to these people. But what is the confidence of a prophet in the midst of people who are obstinate of heart and hard of face? Saan manggagaling ang iyong lakas? Saan manggagaling ang iyong tibay kapag ikaw ay haharap sa mga tao na hindi marunong makinig sa iyo? Jesus or God told the prophet Ezekiel, You are my prophet among them. Therefore, God reminds the prophet Ezekiel, You do not put your confidence in yourself. You put your confidence in God. In our gospel reading today, this is also what we have seen in the life of Jesus as a prophet, as a messenger of God's word. When Jesus went home to his native place and taught in the synagogue, the people took offense, criticized him, and said, Is this not the carpenter's son? Is he not just a carpenter? Where did he get his power, his authority? That is why they did not believe in Jesus. Kung ano yung sinabi ng Diyos kay Propeta Ezekiel na dadanasin niya, yan din ang dinanas ni Jesus bilang propeta. Kung ano-ano ang sinabi sa kanya, kung ano-ano ang ibinato sa kanya ng mga tao na masasamang salita, pero pinanghinaan ba ng loob si Jesus? Hindi. Sapagkat bilang propeta, ang tiwala ni Jesus ay hindi lamang sa kanyang sarili. Ang tiwala ni Jesus ay inilagay niya sa Diyos, sapagkat ang Diyos ang nagsugo sa kanya. Ang Diyos ang nagbibigay sa kanya ng lakas at ng salita na sasabihin sa mga tao. My dear brothers and sisters, this is my question to you this morning. 
Where do you put your confidence? Where does your confidence lie? In yourself? Then, when we fail, we will be disappointed. But when you put your confidence in God, then even in failures, we will still push through, we will still push forward because our confidence does not lie only on ourselves, but our confidence lie in God. Sana po mga kapatid ngayong araw, ito po ang maituro sa atin ng salita ng Diyos, ng buhay ng isang propeta. Ang tiwala natin ay hindi lamang sa ating mga sarili. Sapagkat darating ang panahon, darating ang araw, magkakamali tayo. Darating ang araw na ang gagawin natin ay hindi tama. Hindi sapat ang gagawin natin. Pero kapag ikaw ba ay nagkamali, kapag ba ikaw ay pinanghinaan, ikaw ba ay aatras na? Ang buhay ng isang propeta ay nagtuturo sa atin. Ano man ang iba to ng mga tao sa iyo, ano man ang sabihin ng mga tao, ano man ang kahinaan mo, hindi na riyan ang tiwala, kundi ang tiwala natin ay nasa lakas ng Panginoon. St. Paul, in our second reading today, tells us of this. He said, God has given me revelation so that I could teach the people. But he said, God also gave me a weakness so that I will not only depend on myself, but he said, I should depend on the grace of God. And therefore, he said, I am content with weakness, with insults, with hardships, with persecutions. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Ito rin po ang dinanas ng buhay ni San Pablo bilang isang propeta. Sabi niya, Bagaman siya ay isinugo ng Diyos bilang tagapagdala ng kanyang salita, binigyan pa rin siya ng Diyos ng kahinaan upang hindi lamang siya magtiwala sa kanyang sarili, kundi siya ay magtiwala sa Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, in these times of pandemic, there are many times that we will fail. Maraming ang nagsasabi po ngayon na sa panahon ng pandemya, marami ang naaapektuhan ang emotional state, psychological state, mga tao na nawala ng trabaho, humina ang negosyo, hindi nakapag-aral ngayong taon na ito, nahihirapang mag-aral sa panahon na ito, and Sometimes we will look at ourselves as a failure and we will say, Lord, I am a failure. I failed in my business. I failed in my work. I lost my job. I failed in my education this year. But where do you put your confidence? Where does our confidence lie? Is it in ourselves? Then, we will always have failures and weaknesses. But St. Paul reminds us today, put your confidence not on yourself. Put it in God. And when your confidence lie in God, you will say, like St. Paul, God's grace is enough for me. And when I am weak, then 
I am strong in Christ. Sana po ngayong araw, matutunan po natin na magkamali man tayo, humina man tayo, mawalan man tayo ngayong mga panahon na ito, hindi ibig sabihin ay wala na ang confidence natin sapagkat ang tiwala natin ay hindi lamang sa sarili, kundi sa Panginoon. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Mass, as we gather in this Eucharistic celebration, let us today put our confidence in God's grace. And later on, we will receive the Eucharist, the body of Christ. And when we receive this grace of the sacrament of the body of Christ, when you return to your seats, talk to Jesus in you and say to Him, Lord, there will be times that I will be weak. I will fail. I will not be strong enough for myself. But because of you, and I receive you today in your body, because of you, I will put my confidence in you, in God. And whenever I am weak, I know you will be strong for me. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus was rejected by His own people. In faith, we now accept Him as our Lord and Savior. And so we pray in His name. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Bishop Jose, in his prophetic ministry of teaching the Catholic faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve society in police and fire forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and those with disabilities who find Christ's power in their weakness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper devotion to Mary in our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who died in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, in your goodness, hear the petitions of your believing people. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day, Bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life and by ascending to you O father he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease a gather to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy 
these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We put our confidence in God, and so in this Mass, let us call Him as our loving Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all of you who have joined us this morning in our Eucharistic celebration, those who are uh, standing outside of the cathedral, and uh, even those who are watching us through the online streaming of this Mass. We thank you most specially for uh, your help, your donations, and support for the Manila Cathedral that keep us going in this online ministry. Maraming salamat po sa patuloy po ninyong mga tulong at suporta sa mga mass intentions na inyong pinapadala sa amin nang sa gayon ang misyon namin sa online ministry ay magpatuloy. At ipanalangin po natin patuloy ang ating bagong arsobispo na si Cardinal Jose Advincula. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you and in His kindness pour out upon you the gifts of His blessing now and forever. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to His words that they may be filled with everlasting gladness now and forever. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh, 